Imagine booking your dream holiday. The one thing that you've been thinking about for years, the destination you can't wait to see, the culture you can't wait to embrace. And you arrive finally in this foreign land, only to be sat in the baggage hall, watching everyone else collect their bag, except for you. Why? Why did your bag not make it onto the flight? What happened between the moment you gave them your bag at check-in and you went through the terminal with a smile on your face, spraying perfume as you went through duty-free? Meanwhile, your bag was wet. What was happening? Well, there is no simple answer to this because there are so many different factors that could have affected it. Now, as an engineer working at Heathrow Airport, part of my duty and responsibility is to make sure that when you arrive to your destination, your bag makes it too. And in this little video, I'm gonna be taking you through something that I redesigned within the baggage system to make sure less of your holidays end up in absolute disaster, the way I just described. And the solution was so good that they decided to show it on ITV, one of the UK's national TV channels on a program called Heathrow, Britain's busiest airport. Now this all started when I was walking through the baggage system one day with my manager and I was taking a look at all the different pieces of machinery working. And you see me, I'm curious. I like to ask loads of questions. And I saw something that literally looked like a little speed bump. And it seemed to push some bags over and not push other bags over. And I didn't even know what it was there for. So I asked my manager, I said, what's this meant to do, what is it? And he said, oh, well that's called a baggage toppler. And what that's designed to do is to take bags that are stood up like this and to push them over and to get them Flats. And I asked my manager, why? Why do the bags have to be on their side? And he told me that if a bag stays stood upright, then further down the line as it goes down the conveyor belt, it will not fit through an x-ray machine. It will actually stop dead in its tracks. It will raise an alarm. Then something's gonna have to walk across the baggage system, come push the bag over, reset the system, and then it can continue. That is precious minutes. The whole point of a baggage system is to try and get the bags from check-in onto the plane as quickly as possible. If we're sat there wasting time for somebody to walk across the baggage system to push the bag over, that bag might not make it onto the flight. As you'd expect, the name is a baggage toppler, so you'd think that any bag that goes over this thing will topple. But in reality, some of the bags were staying stood upright, and this was really frustrating to see. I decided to take matters into my own hands. I decided to redesign the baggage toppler. How was I going to do that? I stood there for hours watching it work, watching which bags did fall over and which bags didn't fall over. More importantly, why do some of the bags not fall over? I literally looked like a meme, sat there staring at it with mathematical equations flying through my head and by the end of it, it clicked. system and this this is your bag well according to this tag right here this is your bag the way bags are injected into our baggage system at Heathrow is like this so the bag comes into the system like this now the problem is the distance from here to here is too high to go through an x-ray machine so what we need to do is we need to somehow flip the bag we want the bag to be laying flat just like that. This is the ideal. This is how we want bags to travel through our system. The question is, how? Pause, look, you look down here, probably here somewhere, or there, here, here, here. There should be a little button that has a thumbs up. Click on it, shh, click on it, blah. If I want to flip a bag from this side to this side, we need to induce on this bag an angular momentum traveling in this direction to be able to make it actually topple over. Now, this right here is the equation for angular momentum. 
you can see that there is some complicated stuff going on, on the bottom. But what I want you to concentrate on is this T right here. This T stands for time. And what it means is how long does the bag take to get from this angle to this angle? That to that. The speed in which it goes from there to there is what determines how strong of a push you're giving this bag. So, how did I incorporate this into the design? I thought, well, the current design looks something like this. You have a flat top on the top, and as the bag comes over it, it goes over that flat top, and it takes a bit of time to go from this over a flat top to this. The time it takes to actually go from here to here is delayed because of this flat top. So, I decided to remove that flat top. I did some calculations to understand exactly what would happen if I remove that flat top. The result would make three and a half times more angular velocity simply by removing the flat top. So, using this understanding, I made two different types of designs. As you can see, neither of them having a flat top. But you see, a sketch will only take you so far in the professional world. I needed to turn these into CAD models. That is when my trusty friend Abs came in. This guy is a mastermind with CAD. Within 15, 20 minutes, he had turned my hand-drawn sketches into beautiful CAD models. And once I had the CAD models, it was time to hit the workshop. Now, I didn't make these myself. I have a friend called Callum who Again, it's like a wizard, but rather than making stuff on CAD, he can make stuff in real life. At Heathrow, we have a massive engineering materials workshop and literally they can make you anything. So within a couple of weeks, we had our first prototype. Now the first prototype was made out of mild steel, but after a discussion with the team and doing a bit of research, I realized that mild steel could have been a catastrophe waiting to happen. Mild steel doesn't do very well when you put it under continuous friction and continuous force from a belt going over it over and over and over and over again. So we scrapped the mild steel because the last thing I wanted was this mild steel to wear really thin, turn into a razor and then cut the belt, ending up with a catastrophe in the baggage system. Another idea came to us thinking, well, if we try to avoid the friction on top of this little bump, then why don't we put a roller and that roller will keep spinning and spinning and spinning as the belt flies over. But then I thought to myself, I want to design something that doesn't require maintenance. Now in the engineering world, you can make something that needs maintenance and it constantly needs people looking after it, or you can design something that doesn't need maintenance. They call it an install and forget, but you don't actually forget about it. You have to sort of do an inspection maintenance every once in a while, make sure that the metal is still there. It's not wearing away too much. I wanted to design something that required as little maintenance as possible, yet was as effective as possible. That is when we decided to scrap the mild steel, scrap the rollers, and stick with stainless steel. And once the stainless steel topplers were made, it was the moment of truth. It was time to install these topplers and see if we can finally get more bags to flip over. I was so, so nervous when we finally put it in and it was time to put that first bag on the system and watch it fly over. Not only was it nerve wracking to see if my design was gonna work, but I also had a whole film crew over my shoulder filming it about to put it on national television. This could have been an extreme embarrassment, but I decided to trust the maths, trust what I had understood in the equations and just go for it. It was an absolute sensational success. While we were there trialing them and putting bags on it, 100% of bags that went over this toppler were toppling. Without a doubt, the moment I saw those bags flipping over, I felt so, so good because I knew that I had just added something to the Heathrow baggage system to make sure that more people have their belongings when they're on holiday. That is literally what gives me satisfaction as an engineer, making sure that people are getting the best customer service from our airport. That's what my job is all about. I put a video of how this baggage toppler is working on LinkedIn and this thing went viral. I was getting messages from engineers from around the world in different airports telling me, listen, we have the exact same problem in our airport. Do you mind sending over some of your designs so that we can actually implement this solution in our airport? It just goes to show you that sometimes some of the problems that you may be facing, other people may also be facing, but unless you say it, 
no one will know. And on top of all of that, we had a film crew filming the whole thing, and now it's been documented and it's on ITV. And that is how I was able to redesign part of the Heathrow baggage system to make sure that more of you lot have holidays where your bags are with you, your clothes are with you, and your holiday is not ruined. Thank you for watching this little video. If you want to learn more about the airport and what I do as an engineer, there's a video right here for you to watch and enjoy.